G'day, Greg Miller here from The Joy of Wood. Who love these Scandinavian style butter knives? These are so much fun to make. They're really good on butter and spreads, also on soft cheeses. And they come in lots of different shapes and styles. There's a few. That's all up to your amazing imagination, isn't it? So what we need is a blade. I prefer the bit of a curve than the dead straight ones. But this needs a handle and a blade. How's that? So I'm going to show you how we can do that, starting with a blank, a butter knife blank. So a bit of wood about that size. First thing to do is to design it. So all right, we want to have a blade somewhere. So what if we put a blade down here, bring this up in here. We want to have a bit of a handle. So let's bring that up to separate the handle away from the blade. What about something like that? Does that look okay? I could make that a bit finer there, bring that in there a bit. That might be better, a bit rounder up the end. How's that? Something like that. So here's the blade, here's the handle. I reckon that's going to work quite nicely. Okay. So I'm going to use, to do this, most of this, I'm going to use my Sloyd knife. So there's the long one, the Mora 106, and there's the shorter one, the Mora 120. Uh, they both work really well. That's my preferred one, but often a lot of people, a lot of kids prefer that one there, the shorter one. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to take this around in here. So. Working with grain direction, I know I can just cut around in there and just chew that out. See that? So come in a bit closer. So I'm using that thumb on thumb method. My thumb is partly on the back of the knife, partly on the back of there, of the blade. And my non-knife hand is applying the pressure. None of this slashing blade business. That's throwing away energy and putting other people in danger that might be around. Mind you, with social distancing at the moment, nobody should be that close, should they? Right, here we go. So there's a bit of a curve for the blade. Now here's the fun part. I want to be able to take this out of here. So I'm going to get that started by cutting down, doing a few of those. You see where that is. If I push that through now, it should split through there and miss the handle. So I'm just going to shift my thumb around to that side, put this against my chest and just pull that through. You see, there we go, we've missed it. Now we're going to be careful. I'm going to come back down in here. I'll do a few in there and I'll come back this way just while we get that started. I've got this in here because I know I have to come the other direction to be able to do that. But I can pile up those shavings in there pretty quickly. And around we go. Now when I work up the thin end of the blade, I can do a tighter radius curve. See, I've shifted this thumb onto the blade so I can work right out on that point. Now, if I force that now, it's going to go out through here. So I've got to come the other direction. And somewhere in there is that transition point where the grain changes direction. Beautiful. Look at that. Now up in here, it's getting really tight. Not much of a handle to hang on to. So I might use that thumb pull method. Now I've got my thumb around on the side of the blade, blade towards me. I'm going to pull it this way. The really important thing to remember is this hand does not push. This hand, if anything, springs back. So it so all comes down to this thumb, pulling it in. I can come in around there to shape it that direction. Over here, I'll turn the blade around. I'm going to go that way. It's all about working out how to go with the grain so we're not tearing great chunks out we're controlling what comes out and we're working with the wood and with the tool 
as I often say, it's like a three-way relationship between you, the piece of wood, and the tool. There you go, bit of a shape happening in there. Now up here, to do this one, I have to go that direction. I'll come around in there, just using that thumb push. See my thumbs are staying connected. I'll turn it around and come back the other direction. There we go. Now that might work on a hand like mine. Might be a bit chunky for some people. So let's sort that out here. We're going to bring this up here somewhere. Now you see how that's breaking there? That bit there is telling me, wants me to go the other direction. There's my thumb pull method there. Okay, so I'm going to come down this way. Use that power cut to take a heap of that off. You notice I keep looking at my line. Look at that. Now, that might be a bit nicer if I put a bit more of a shape into here, do you think? Just fine it down a bit. It's fun when you make this up as you go along. You start with a bit of an idea and as you go you think, nah, let's do this. So I'll just put a bit of a bit of a curve into there just to make it a bit more interesting. So you, when you hold the blade and a bit of wood really tight, this doesn't work. You just need to be able to hold the tools really gently. And it makes it very easy. Bit of a downward hook on that end. What do you reckon? We'll sort out that blunty bit there yet. That's working quite good. Might be a bit fat up here. So I might just bring that curve back so it starts back a bit further. Yeah, I like that a bit better. Okay, so there's a bit of a shape. Now, the next thing is to shape the actual blade so it is like a blade. Wouldn't cut butter at the moment. I'm going to cut along here. Now, grain direction looks pretty straight here, and on the end, looks like it goes that way. See that? So there's a chance when I go along here that it might tear off down there. If it does, maybe that might be a change in design or it'll be up here, I've got to come this way. Now to do the blade, to take this down, we don't want a little narrow bevel, we want a long bevel. So I'm going to use that thumb pivot method to do those wide shaving cuts. See that? It's pivoting off my thumb. And you see where that facet line comes around in here. So nice and wide. Swing that around. We want to go about halfway through the thickness. We come around in here. So far so good up the end. Haven't had any problems. Sometimes having a really sharp knife helps a lot. It's less likely to take a chunk out. So those nice shaving cuts. So I'm nearly down at the halfway mark. And I'm making sure that this comes right back up into here. You can see where the wood is coming off by looking at where the shaving is coming from. And right now, to take the round out of here, I want the shaving to come from the middle. And up the end, I want this to go down as well. So I'm going to take it right back from here. So as you get out towards the end, you don't have a big fat end. I want to shape that in like that. Beautiful. Okay. So let's come in from the other side. So I'm working with that, trying to get those nice wide cuts. See, so I'm just moving this hand up in here. Now there's a bit of grain direction stuff going on. Okay. Sometimes you can get around that by going across 
So there's a bit of tearing there. You would rather I went this way. So when I do that pull cut, I just want to go very gently, remembering this hand is not pushing. As we bring that in, yep, there we go, up into there. All right. See what happens if I go that direction there. All right, so that's come down a bit, a little bit wonky. So I've got to take a bit off this side here. <laughs> Look at that. The tiniest, tiniest little nick just there. I got myself up here. Now, normally you wouldn't bleed like this, but because my fingers are really busy, my body sending a lot of extra blood down into the fingers to feed oxygen to the muscles. And so the tiniest little cut leaks a lot. Don't worry about that. The only pest with that is when you get red spots on your work. Right, it's because I'm doing this in a hurry for the video as well, rather than doing it at a leisurely pace like you might do at home. Okay, I'm gonna hook that around in there. Beautiful, so I'm just gonna keep shaping this really, just to get that right where I want it. See you in a minute. So I've just been finishing cleaning that up a bit there. Also put a band-aid on, only to stop leaving red spots everywhere. <laughs> now, making these is a fantastic way of learning to work with the grain, because along here, the grain direction in relation to the to the edge changes. So over here we've got to cut this direction, over there we've got to cut that direction, here we cut this way, there we cut that way, there we cut that way. So I'm going to use all of that while I round the handle out. I want to, want to make it, but you see it's digging in there, so I'm going to come back the other way. And we're looking for that happy place. Now this is very gentle knife action. Hardly any pressure at all, just to shape this. Using an assortment of techniques, which we've used elsewhere, and just putting them all together so we get that nice and rounded. So up here I know I've got to go this way. A lot of traditional woodworkers like to argue about whether you should or shouldn't use sandpaper. You could just get quite a nice off the knife finish doing this. But what you'll find in these bits of wood is that there are machining lines that go across that way. When you hold it to the light, you'll see those faint lines from when it was machined into a stick with parallel surfaces. I am going to sand this just to get that cleaned up. I could leave this with rustic looking edges in here, but I'm just going to clean it right up. Right, there we go. Look at that. Now, I'm pretty happy with the shape of that. Time for the sandpaper. So here we are, I'm just working on sanding this. So I'm using this method where you fold the paper into three, a little bit of origami there. And that just makes it really easy for going around curves. I can wrap the paper around like that, get good value for money out of it. So where I've got these curves, just making that nice and smooth, even transitions. Let's go back and forth with that. So I'm happy with where it's going. So when you do it like that, you can see it goes in, wraps around, doing that rolling action. So we shift the curve around. Right. That is so close it doesn't matter. The last thing here is out on the blade, getting that happy. So to do that, it'll work best when I come in with my paper on the flat. I'm going to lay this on the bench so I can just get that pressure right where I want it.
Now we don't want a razor sharp edge, but we do want reasonably fine and consistent. I'll track that around to get the sharpness off it. And I'll just go back in and fix that up. So the next thing to do is to use the finer paper to get rid of the scratch marks from this one. So I'll grab a bit of finer paper. And away we go. So I'm looking to see if there's knife marks. You see that little bit of tear out just there. So when you use the finer paper, it's a bit like a magnifying glass. So I'm just going to come in, find a good bit. This paper's nearly dead. Just get that corner in there. Get rid of that little bit of tear out from the blade. Still a bit of it there, but I've reduced it considerably. And around we go. We want to get that nice and even. Okay, well, I reckon that's close enough for me. So what I'm going to do now is put my favourite food safe plant based oil on here. I stay away from oils that have got mineral oil in them. Why would I want to spread fossil fuels all over my spatula? That's what I've got to say. Nice to use the plant based stuff. And this is nice virgin coconut oil from Papua New Guinea. So it's free. It's a um, fair trade and ticks all the right boxes for me. Now, how is that? Pretty nice, eh? Have a lot of fun with these. That's a great way of improving your whittling skills. Nice little Scandinavian style butter knife. Also very nice on soft cheeses. Have a lot of fun with these. All right now, I think it's time to go home and eat some camembert. Cheers.